And now we welcome MRS Innovation in Materials Characterization Award winner, Dr. John Mao. Dr. Mao, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. I'm really pleased about this award and um, I'm very pleased to talk to you today. Your award citation reads, for pioneering coherent diffractive imaging for a wide range of material systems and atomic electron tomography for determining atomic positions without assuming crystallinity. Can you tell us a little bit about your work and how you came to work in this particular field? Yeah, this is a very good question. So uh, the coherent diffractive imaging, also termed CDI, uh, which replaces the lens of a microscope with a computation algorithm has transformed the diffraction imaging and the microscopy field. I started this field when I was a graduate student. At that time, almost nobody believed that a CDI would work. Um, but I was willing to uh, take on this high risk and high reward project. Uh, in 1999, we published the first experimental paper on CDI in nature. Since then, the CDI field has grown very rapidly and uh, has been one of the main justifications to construct, construct a large-scale coherent X-ray source worldwide. Now, let, let me turn, on, turn to the Atomic Electron Tomography Project, also known as AET. In 2010, I realized that some of the computation algorithms developed in CDI could be used to dramatically improve the tomo uh, tomography reconstructions. I then said to myself, why not to push electron tomography to the atomic scale, which had been a dream of the electron microscopy community for almost a half century. Uh, in 2012, we published the um, first AET results, which achieved 2.4 angstrom resolution without assuming crystallinity. Since then, we have published a series of important papers to determine the 3D atomic structure of non-crystalline materials. Now, it's become really, this both fields become really very, very important. And in your award talk, you discuss two methods that go beyond crystallography. Tell us about those methods and what do they mean in terms of creating new and improved materials? Um, that's a very, very, very good question. Uh, so uh, let me just give you a little background about the crystallography. And uh, the crystallography has been central to the development of many fields of science over the past century. And it, it has now matured to a point that as long as good quality crystals are available, the atomic structure can be routinely determined in three dimensions. However, many samples in material science, physics, chemistry, nanoscience, geology, and biology are non-crystalline. And thus, their 3D structures are not accessible by traditional crystallography. CDI and AET are two powerful methods that can go beyond the crystallography. So they will help us gain a fundamental understanding of non-crystalline materials from the nano to the atomic scale. In many materials, the, the structure determines the property and functionalities. For example, in uh, uh, 2019, we advanced AET to capture crystal nucleation dynamics at 4D atomic resolution. Using iron platinum nanoparticles as a model, we monitor the structure and dynamics of the same nuclear undergo growth fluctuation, dissolution, merging, and or division. We revealed that each nucleus has a core of maximum order parameter and an order parameter gradient points from the core to the boundary of the nucleus. So we also observed that the nucleation dynamics is regulated by the distribution of the order parameter and its gradient. So this experimental observation are inconsistent with the classical nuclear theory, which has long appeared in textbooks. So now, this example I showed, our experiment showed the textbook theory is incorrect, which means to understand nucleation at atomic scale, we need a, a theory beyond uh, classical nuclear theory. More recently, you've led a team that has determined the 3D atomic structure of amorphous materials. Can you tell us about that work and what are some of the applications that could result? So this is a really very exciting uh, paper and we just published uh, this week in Nature. Why it's so difficult to determine amorphous materials, so 3D atomic structure of amorphous materials? There are a couple of reasons. First, they don't have a periodic arrangement. So if you shine X-ray or electron on these amorphous materials, you don't get this kind of a typical crystallography diffraction patterns. You, you don't get this individual so-called black peaks. 
And the second, this atom, the atomic structures arranged much very different from crystalline. So using the best microscopy, electron microscopy or X-ray microscopy, if you look at it, you, you don't get any kind of a contrast. They kind of smeared out. So those two challenges, just uh, it's so difficult to overcome. And recently, we, we advanced AET and to solve the first uh, 3D atomic structure for amorphous solid. And uh, we found something that's very interesting. There's, um, it's not a completely random. You know, they, they have some uh, order in disorder. And with our techniques, now we can peer into this truly atomic uh, resolution structures and it will help us to uh, maybe better design these materials. And so I think the, the implication is twofold. One is fundamental understanding of the amorphous materials. And the second, you know, in terms of applications, have a fundamental understanding of the structure can help the better design the materials, you know, better synthesize the materials, and find it potentially related the structure to the function, functionality and the structural properties. And uh, by the way, we also created a so-called materials data bank. And uh, we just learned from uh, the biology community, they have the called a protein data bank. The protein data bank was established in 1960s uh, at the Brookhaven National Lab. Now become a very important data bank for, for example, drug dis discovery and, um, um, and all kinds of applications. But in material science community, we had no such data bank. So last year, we, we initiated this called a material standard bank. After we solved the atomic structures, we deposit the structure in this data bank, and hopefully we can benefit the all community, physical science community. So I think the Im impact will be, um, uh, it will be very broad. And where do you see your research headed in the future? Yeah, the, yes, I mean, the application is very broad. As I mentioned to you, you know, CDI uh, has really, uh, it's a new way of the, uh, new type of microscopy. You know, conventional microscopy uh, based on lenses, like your eyes and my eyes and lenses. Lenses just get a, but now we replace the lens with a computation algorithm. And which means this, if you use a very good algorithm, it can be a perfect lens. And uh, um, such as, so therefore, CDI, the application is very, very broad. It's not only just in material science, you know, to the biology community, um, to the physical science and the chemistry, there's broader applications. And also AET. Um, AET is uh, able to determine the 3D atomic structure of non-crystal materials. As I mentioned earlier, you know, on Earth, most of the matter are non-crystal, right? Not only just material science, in chemistry, in physics, and uh, we will be, we are able to get individual atoms without, without assuming crystallinity. So, and uh, right now we are trying to push the techniques for low Z elements or radiation sensitive materials. The question is whether we can determine the, all the individual atoms in these radiation sensitive materials. So that's another important direction we are pursuing. Dr. Mao, again, congratulations and thank you for joining us today. You're, you're, you're very welcome, Altria. I really, uh, it's, it's a pleasant, it's a very pleasure to talk to you. I just want to also thank, uh, uh, you know, my uh, group members and, and the collaborators. Without them, we couldn't achieve this. And also uh, my funding uh, uh, support, including uh, DOE, BES, and NSF, uh, DMR, and also Mealy Grant. Uh, without their support, uh, we couldn't achieve this.